This is the eighth video lecture covering Lesson 8 in Clayton Croy's A Primer to Biblical Greek. In this lesson, we will discuss demonstratives and the special use of autos. So let's begin with review. We'll recall that pronouns are words that take the place of another noun, and we call that other noun the antecedent. We, we know that Greek pronouns agree in number and in gender with their antecedent, but not necessarily with case. And we talked about third-person pronouns having very similar endings to those of adjectives. So now we introduce a new concept, which are demonstratives. Demonstratives are words that specify or point out a specific person or thing. In English, we would translate this or that. Demonstratives may function like adjectives, like this man, or they can be used by themselves, like pronouns, this one, or or that one. And there are two types of demonstratives. Near demonstratives, this, which is the Greek word hutas, and that, which is the Greek word ekanos. Demonstratives can function like adjectives. In this case, they are known as demonstrative adjectives and they are used to modify a noun. In this case, they will agree in gender, number, and case with the noun that they modify. The noun that is modified by a demonstrative will have an article in one of two places. It might follow the demonstrative, so you would have the demonstrative followed by the article followed by the noun, or you might have the article, then the noun, and then the demonstrative. It will not, in other words, be in between the noun and the article. So here are a few examples in Greek. How te he adelphe, which you could also say is he adelphe aute. In either case, we would translate it as this sister. Ekenai hai su hai, or hai su hai ekenai. In either case, we would translate as those souls. So demonstrative pronouns are different. They are demonstratives that function like pronouns. That is, they stand in the place of a noun. Here, there will be agreement on gender and number with the antecedent but the case will be determined by their function in the sentence. We will generally translate these generically, like this or that, or in some cases, based on the gender of the noun, um, we might translate it more specifically as this man or those women. So here is an, a, a few examples in Greek. Hutoi pistiu usin. These ones believe, or we could translate it as these men believe. In Greek, as in, in some other foreign languages, the use of the masculine plural can be inclusive of, uh, of women, um, or it can be indicative of simply males that are present. Um, in, in modern translations, for example, the NRSV, you'll notice that the Greek word adelphoi, which is the masculine plural of adelphos, which means brother, is translated as brothers and sisters. This is an indicator of this practice to use the masculine plural as a, as a group or as a, um, to include both men and women. Here's another example. Akenai didaskusi ta technon. Here it is specifically those women are teaching the child because the ending I is feminine plural. And so we would want to, in translation, bring out the fact that we recognize that the, that the feminine plural is being translated as those women. All right, so we've talked sort of about the concept of demonstratives and their special uses or particular uses in Greek. Now let's look at the forms. Here is the singular form of the near demonstrative this, hutas. You'll notice that the red endings are endings that we have become very familiar with through the course of this semester. They're similar to the endings of the article and of adjectives that we've learned in previous lessons. The most important distinguishing trait of the near demonstrative is that feminine singular nominative, how te. Now, if you're not a attending to the breath mark, you would think that this could be aute, which is the pronoun for she. But notice it's haute versus aute. And the accent is over the upsilon here in the demonstrative, and it would be over the eta in the pronoun for she. But other than that, the endings are very similar with the addition of either the rough breathing hutas and haute, or the addition of the two uh, before 
uh, what is essentially the definite article. We see similar patterns with near demonstratives in the plural. Hu toi, hao tai, tao ta. And again, the, the distinguishing characteristic for that feminine nominative is the rough breathing with the accent over the upsilon. But then other than that, those red endings indicate this is what we've begun to see, especially with the definite articles. And so it's important for us just to begin to recognize those endings that they tell us case and gender, um, and then that the tu or the hu toy and how tai um, are indicators of the plural near demonstratives in the nominative masculine and feminine, respectively. All right, so let's talk then about the demonstratives that are far. These we translate as that or those. In the singular, you'll notice, again, very similar endings to what we've become accustomed to. Akenos, akene, akena. And then the, the pattern continues almost identically to what we've seen in adjectives and uh, the definite article. Of course, we're missing the te of the definite article, but those endings have been uh, added on to the, the stem, a cane. Looking now at the plural, the, the, the pattern is the same. We see the, the endings that we've become familiar with, um, oi, i, a, on, 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 ois, ice, ois, us, as, a, uh, simply being added on to the stem, a cane. All right, so just a bit of a warning here. Demonstratives can seem a lot like the third person pronouns. So the demonstrative uh, autas, or the demonstrative hutas, and the third person pronoun autas look similar. So to differentiate, as I noted above, uh, the hutas, the accent will always be on the first syllable, and it will either begin with a rough breathing or with the letter tau. All right, the final uh, new concept introduced in this lesson is the special use of autas. So there are three basic uses of autas. First, it can function like a pronoun, he, she, or it, which we learned about in lesson seven. Second, it can function as a predicate adjective. In this case, it will either be before a noun and its article or after a noun with no repetition of the article. This is known as the intensive use of autas. Thirdly, there is what is known as the identical use of autas, and this is when it's functioning like an attributive adjective, which means it will be between a noun and its article, or after a noun with its own article. All right, so let's say more about the intensive use of autas. The intensive use, again, uses autas in the predicate position. Here we would translate with self or selves, and the translation will be, be, be determined by the number and gender of the accompanying noun. So, for example, autas ha anthropos, we would translate this as the man himself. It's, in, it's intensifying the subject. Hoi, hui, oi, autoi, we would translate as the sons themselves. You can see because hoi, hui, oi is masculine plural, um, we are translating uh, the intensive autas as plural, themselves. Next, the special use of autas, which is known as the identical use. Uh, again, this is autas in the attributive position. We would translate this as same, and it can occur without a noun. So for example, we could see either he aute agape, or he agape he aute. In either case, with the attributive position, this would be translated as the same love. Now, we might also see it without a noun. For example, ha autas soze kai lue. And here we would translate it as the same man, or perhaps the same person, saves and destroys. We have to supply some words in English. Um, and so it's either the same thing, or the same man, or the same person, saves and destroys. So you see that ha autas is functioning as that noun. It's standing in the place of the noun um, and is the subject of the, ver the two verbs, soze and lue. All right, so let's get started with one of the examples from the practice and review exercises. This is number one. Ha theas apostele tautan ton profeten es ton laon. 
So as I've recommended in previous lessons, we want to begin to try to find the simple sentence. We're going to bracket prepositional phrases, we're going to look for the main verb, and then we're going to try to identify the subject and the direct object by looking for the nominative and accusative cases, respectively. And from that, we'll translate the rest of the sentence. So, we begin by bracketing one prepositional phrase in the sentence, es ton laon. Then we look for the main verb. In this case, we're lucky there's only one verb, apostele. And then we begin to look for the subject and the direct object by looking for nouns in the accusative and um, the nominative case. And so we see that ha theos is in the nominative case. It has the definite article which helps us identify it. And ton profetain is in the accusative case. Again, the definite article helps us. So a simple version of the sentence would be God sends the prophet. So what then do we do with that word tautan? Remember, this is a demonstrative. And because of the way that it's ordered, it's functioning um, uh, to modify the direct object ton profetain. So we will translate this sentence fully as God sends this prophet to the people. Again, tautan is modifying ton profetain and it's indicating which prophet is being sent to the people. If we can uh, just point out a few things here. First, you'll notice that is ton. a masculine singular accusative form of the definite article. And yet, if you look at profetain, it appears as though that's a feminine singular accusative. But here is why it's really important to memorize your vocabulary, because you'll remember that profetes is actually a masculine noun uh, that, that is formed after nouns of the first declension. And we would parse a pastele as present active indicative, third singular. And we might talk about the accusative case of ton laon um, being in the accusative case because it follows the preposition ace. All right, that's all for now on Lesson 8. Look forward to seeing you all in class. Thank you for your attention.